Welcome, everybody. It's so great to see a nice turnout today and so many smiles for a Monday morning. It's fantastic. Uh, my name is Glenn Hayes. I'm with the Office of Public Service Accessibility at uh, Treasury Board. And uh, uh, au nom de notre équipe, uh, merci pour votre présence aujourd'hui. On a plusieurs raisons pour célébrer. On behalf of the team, thanks very much for being with us today. Donc, uh, journée en balance qui nous a... uh, welcome you and kick off the week. And, uh, kick off this strategy launch. So uh, um, kind of got a brain block there for a second, but anyway. Um, it's, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, I think I'll just carry on. It's, it's such an exciting uh, day today, and it's, I was talking with some colleagues out there, and we were, we were saying, you know, it wasn't so long ago that we were wondering if a day like today uh, would happen, but uh, here it is. Uh, we've got legislation in the works, we've got uh, our strategy set to launch, and uh, so it's starting to feel very real. And uh, it, I'm just filled with excitement, and I hope you feel it uh, too. Um, and before I forget, I want to make sure that uh, I mentioned I was promised that I wouldn't forget. Uh, in addition to the LSQ and the ASL sign language interpretation that you're going to see uh, behind me, we also have some additional uh, sign language interpreters available today. So if you require uh, some of those services out uh, by the booths uh, or for any other reason, just let Beverly Brown or Natalie Dakin or any of the other uh, get you that. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, so uh, the other thing, I'd like to ask for your help today. Uh, when I introduce the MC for today, uh, let's not get the usual uh, polite uh, public service welcome. Okay, let's let's get your celebratory welcome <laughs> that is suitable for the launch of a of a week like this like and one that has a strategy. Yes. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a warm up. Okay. And I want to take a minute to welcome those who may be uh, tuning in via live stream on the Accessible Canada uh, Facebook page as well. So that was a nice warm up. I was going to save it for the intro of the MC, but we're, we'll do it again. So <laughs> get ready. She is the first Deputy Minister of Public Service Accessibility, uh, la première sous-ministre uh, de l'accessibilité au sein de la fonction publique, Yasmin Laroche. <laughs> Thank you very much, Glenn. Happy National Accessibility Week! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Welcome to those of you who are uh, streaming the event online. Aujourd'hui, nous nous réunissons pour. And so today, we're here to promote accessibility and inclusion within the public service and also to recognize the significant steps that have been taken by the Canadian government so as to become a model for accessibility as employers and also as service providers. So excited about this event. There is so much work that has been done by people here in the room and throughout the public service to really make this a reality. I'm thrilled to see colleagues from the Persons with Disabilities Champions and Chairs Committee here today. Since I took on the role as your champion almost three years ago, I have called on you repeatedly to share your stories, your lived experience, and your very best ideas on how to make the Government of Canada more accessible and inclusive. And boy, did you ever deliver. Um, as Glenn mentioned, when you think back three years ago, who would have thought we'd be here today with... I did. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. that's because you are the eternal optimist, Minister, <laughs> and that is a wonderful thing. Um, and we are here today with legislation on the verge of being adopted and with a strategy about to be launched. Jamais auparavant, il n'y a eu ce there's never been this level of support uh, to overcome these obstacles and ensure full participation of, of people with disabilities in the life of our country and in the public service. ...of all of you, the coming months have the potential to be truly transformative. 
We have a really full schedule and not a lot of time, so I'd like to, us to get on with the show. We are really kicking off National Accessibility Week in style. We have some very special guests with us to speak to you. We have videos, we have kiosks, but we would like to begin. So here to tell us a little bit more about the government's commitment to diversity and inclusion is Greg Fergus, who's the Parliamentary Secretary to the President of the Treasury Board of Canada. Welcome, Mr. Fergus. We're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yasmin. I really do appreciate that. And also, I'd like to thank Glenn before her uh, for, uh, for, for making uh, the opening comments. And poor Glenn, I just say to you, welcome to the life of a public, of a politician, speaking before a crowd. <laughs> people say that it's, uh, it, people fear that speaking before a crowd more than they fear death. It's a, it, <laughs> after my speech, you'll understand why. Uh, <laughs> Alors, je suis très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui. And on behalf... So I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, and the President of the Treasury Board and the Minister for Digital Infrastructure, I'm very pleased to be here uh, for this important announcement today. Today, it is my pleasure and really an honour to introduce uh, the Minister for Public Services and Procurement and Accessibility, Carla Qualtro. La Ministre Qualtro s'est engagée... Minister Qualtro has been committed to addressing inequality and championing diversity throughout her career. She worked as a lawyer in human rights at the federal level and the provincial level. She chaired the Minister's Council on Employment and Accessibility in British Columbia. And she was also an adjudicator with the Workers' Compensation Appeals Tribunal. Visually impaired since birth, she won three, three Paralympic medals and four World Championship medals. And she holds degrees in political science from the University of Ottawa and also in law from the University of Victoria. In sports, six times, well, not just once, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to go for six. Uh, received a Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012, and she has served as minister since 2015. But before I turn uh, things over to this wonderful champion of human rights, I'd like to say a few words about the public service and the importance of diversity. Au gouvernement du Canada, nous comprenons que la... In the Canadian government, we understand that diversity, diversity of views, diversity of background, well, this is what allows us to find the best solutions to the complex public policy problems of today. Diversity and inclusion, well, they make us stronger as a public service and stronger as a society. Indeed, our country is greater because of it. And that's why it's so important that our public service be representative of the population that it serves. When I talk about uh, diversity and inclusion, about where a little bit where I grew up. I grew up in Montreal. Uh, I was one of uh, very few black people in the West Island of Montreal. Growing, I grew up in a Jewish neighborhood in a French city, in a French province, in the English uh, 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 continent. And I like to say I was a minority within a minority within a minority within a minority. But that gave me a great advantage. And this is what we're trying to achieve here. The advantage is that sometimes we can perceive things that people just wouldn't be able to understand. You can understand how the majority thinks, but you can step back and also see things from your own perspective. C'est ça, cette richesse qu'on veut avoir. And that's the wealth that we want to develop the kind of thing we want to do in order to make sure that the Canadian government would become more inclusive and more diversified. It's a whole source of wealth here from which everyone can benefit. ...that Minister Qualtro should be making this announcement on the first day of National Accessibility Week. Cela témoigne de l'importance de l'accessibilité dans la société. This reflects the importance of accessibility in society and the importance the government places on the achievements of all Canadians. ...opportunities and access services for all Canadians and to opening the door to even greater contributions in the future. As the Prime Minister says, we cannot build a better world unless we work together, respect our differences, protect the vulnerable and put people at the heart 
of the decisions we make. With the announcement being made today, we are doing exactly that. And I'm looking forward to working together to create an accessible, inclusive and just society for all Canadians. Carla Qualtro to make today's announcement. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Greg. And of course, your words are, you know, this is you're preaching to the converted here, and it's really important that we always remember the big picture. I'm beyond excited. This isn't a competition, but if it was, um, you're excited, I'm beyond excited. <laughs> I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered here today on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin people. It's really a pleasure to be here to kick off National Accessibility Week, our third annual week devoted to inclusion and accessibility. And it is so fitting that we're doing this here with you. Of all the places in Canada we could have done this, I honestly believe this is the best place to do it. It is time for us to come together to celebrate the contributions of persons with disabilities and their families and to promote accessibility and inclusion in communities and workplaces across Canada. We're here today to look at how Canada's public service through the Treasury Board Secretariat can become more accessible and inclusive of persons with disabilities. We're also here for a very exciting announcement, which I'll get to shortly. As the Minister of Public Services and Procurement and Accessibility, I have the privilege of working with Treasury Board very closely. Treasury Board has been a crucial partner in my not-so-secret mission of embedding a culture of accessibility across government and has shown leadership in executing this mission. By working with all government departments to advocate for greater accessibility within the public service, they show that strong partnerships can lead to positive change for Canadians. Our government has undertaken many initiatives over the past few years to prompt meaningful change and help break down barriers to inclusion. As we've heard time and time again, when we consulted the disability community to inform the development of Bill C-81, the Accessible Canada Act, Canadians expect the government of Canada to lead by example when it comes to accessibility. That is a duty we take very seriously. And it's why I'm proud to officially launch today, Nothing Without Us, an accessibility strategy for the public service of Canada. Yeah, it's a big deal. I must say that this strategy couldn't have a better name. Nothing Without Us reflects perfectly the culture change that is needed to make sure that persons with disabilities are involved from the start in the creation and implementation of policies and programs that affect our lives and the lives of all Canadians. I commend the Treasury Board of Canada Secretariat for developing the roadmap that will lead our public service to become the most accessible and inclusive public service in the world. A public service that reflects the true diversity of the people it serves, that is innovative, efficient, and productive. Nothing without us will set the overarching principles and conditions for the Public Service of Canada to identify, prevent, and remove barriers to participation for persons with disabilities. This strategy will result in more persons with disabilities being employed by the government and contributing their skills and expertise to society. By bringing persons with disabilities into the core of our public administration, we can strengthen our world-renowned institution and improve service delivery to everyone in Canada. The strategy builds upon our work to improve employment outcomes for persons with disabilities, while also tying into our broader goal of creating a more accessible Canada and removing barriers to inclusion for persons with disabilities. It's an example of how our government is already getting to work on the implementation of the proposed Accessible Canada Act. Once passed, the proposed act will transform how the federal government and federally regulated sectors address barriers to accessibility. This historic piece of legislation 
will have a significant impact on the way Canada thinks, talks, and acts about accessibility, and will proactively identify, remove, and prevent barriers from the start. This will lead to the establishment of accessibility standards in many areas, like employment and the built environment, to name a few. It has passed third reading in the Senate and is set to be debated in the House this week. We expect that it will receive royal assent before the end of the current parliamentary session. I say that with a little grin on my face. <laughs> okay. We can see the finish line. We are very close to reaching our goal to have a law that sends a clear message to Canadians that persons with disabilities will no longer be treated as an afterthought, that systems will be designed inclusively from the start. It is our systems, our policies, our practices and our laws that need to be fixed, not our people. In just over three years, our government has taken major steps towards improving accessibility and inclusion in Canada. However, there is still much work to be done to achieve a fully inclusive Canada without barriers, and it takes collaboration to get there. The accessibility strategy for the public service we're announcing today will play a crucial role in creating this barrier-free Canada that we're all talking about. A Canada where everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed. Together, let's work, let's work to implement long-lasting change to ensure that our systems, our programs and our policies are designed inclusively from the start. And I wish everyone an excellent National Accessibility Work Week. Get to work. <laughs> Thank you. Merci for me. <laughs> you got the get to work part, right? Yeah. Yeah, we heard we heard that. Um, thank you, Minister Qualtro. Um, I'm we're so thrilled that you're with us today. You've really been the driving force and an inspiration to us as we've worked uh, in designing this strategy. Um, you have shown with passionate conviction that accessibility and inclusion will make the public service better and make Canada better. So our next guest, therefore, deserves that we should applaud him for the innovation in 2019, beyond 2020, which was very successful last Wednesday. Many of you were there in order to show the innovative work that you're doing on accessibility. Today. Nothing Without Us really is a strategy that we hope will propel the Beyond 2020 agenda forward to create a truly agile, inclusive, and equipped public service. Please, everybody, let us welcome Mr. Ian Shugart, the Clerk of the Privy Council. Um. I'd also like to congratulate you and thank you and thank the Minister also and the Parliamentary Secretary also and all the team from Treasury Board for the work they've done, for the leadership they've shown. And now it's time. And this is really a good reason for a great celebration. And we're very pleased, therefore, to be here together today in order to celebrate this wonderful achievement. Know that the Public Service of Canada is the largest employer in the country, and um, we're right across uh, the country. And uh, the minister uh, just told us to get to work. Um, but I'm interpreting that as get to work uh, and continue getting to work on, on uh, issues related to disability and not let's stop now and go back to work. So we'll, we'll do that uh, a little later. Um, representing that federal uh, public service, the Office of Public Service Accessibility has been hard at work since last summer engaging with employees from across the country to analyze best practices 
and consult experts in developing this strategy. And Yasmin, you and your team have done just a fabulous job, and I think we should all give Yasmin our thanks and our congratulations. What you've done and, and your uh, team, small but very forceful and very determined and very dedicated in a very short period of time is a terrific example of leadership in championing large scale change. And the results of this work are going to be with us for a very, very long time. And I think it's a wonderful example as well of political leadership and public service leadership coming together to define uh, an area of improvement uh, for Canadians, for public servants, for many others beyond. En raison de notre présence régionale. And uh, the reason for our regional presence is in fact the diversity of, Can of Canada. We're privileged to have access to an enormous pool of talent and uh, enormous uh, diversity of a background and lived experience. This diversity comes together with enormous amount of talent and skills. And that can help us really to push our borders back, to innovate, and really to enrich and increase our base of knowledge. With this great privilege, we also have responsibility to move forward, to evolve, and to meet the needs of every individual. It's important that we do focus on how we can actually uh, create, create a norm within the public service. Public servants where differences are understood, valued and respected. Of Tech Access said the only disability is when people cannot see human potential. As a collective group, we in the public service are working hard to realize and unlock the potential of every public servant and to welcome future public servants with an inclusive mindset. With a little clever spelling, our event this week tells an important story. Accessibility, en anglais c'est appelé avec un i, accessibility becomes access ability. All we need for ability to be recognized and put to work is the right access. With that said, we still have a long journey to become the most inclusive and accessible public service in the world. In the 2018 Public Service Employee Survey, 32% of persons with disabilities indicated that they were the victim of harassment on the job. This is more than double the average for those who do not have a disability. And more, 25% of persons with disabilities reported that they were victims of discrimination on the job compared to 6% of those who do not have a disability. That isn't good enough. We've got to do better. The right numbers are zero. Persons with disabilities are also subject to long and complex accommodation processes. It's not uncommon for an individual to wait several months to gain access to proper work tools. Nor, not only does this decrease productivity, it does not make public servants feel welcome. And persons with disabilities are leaving the public service at a faster rate than the public service average. 7.8% with pers for persons with disabilities compared to 5.6% for the public service as a whole. I'm not giving those numbers to be the bearer of bad news, but it is important that we be honest with our situation and what we're, how we're doing. And we need to do a better job in recruiting, developing, and promoting persons with disabilities in the public service. This is something we all know to be true, and it's why the work of the office and of departments 
is so essential. I'm hopeful for the future, not only because of this event and this week, but because of the efforts and initiatives currently underway across the public service. And this strategy provides a strong foundation for building resilient, inclusive, and accessible work environments. But the success of the strategy rests on our ability and willingness to change the culture of the public service. And the minister said that herself. Pour améliorer l'expérience des personnes. In order to improve the experience of persons with disabilities working in the Government of Canada, we must change the way in which we think and the way we behave. Uh, through a focus on shifting our behavior, and the behind the behaviors are renewed in gender beyond 2020 supports the vision objectives of accessibility strategy. Throughout this uh, journey, the teamwork and teamwork and cooperation are essential. We all have a shared responsibility in identifying and breaking down barriers to make accessibility and inclusivity a reality for everyone. Encouraging the deputy minister community, the executive community, to find ways to embody the spirit of the strategy and push the boundaries for the better. Simple acts combined with empathy and teamwork against this backdrop that the minister, that the government have uh, piloted through Parliament and that we celebrate today can make a big difference in achieving that objective. Merci. Like he said, I, I, I should just rip up my concluding remarks, I think, because like I could not have said it better. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you for coming. Thank you to Minister Qualtro and Mr. Fergus for coming and joining us today. Thank you to all of you for joining. Um, I do have just a few little remarks I want to say before, before we close and you get a chance to go visit some of those kiosks. I want to highlight a few things about how this strategy came around. Um, Ian spoke about the broader context, so the, the data that tell us what the situation has been for public servants with disability. Minister Squal Qualtro spoke about what's at the core of it, which is the principle of nothing without us. And that was really the essence of the, our, our approach in designing this. Um, to date, we have uh, engaged with over 12,000 public servants through wave after wave of survey, uh, town halls, in-person discussions. I think I've become a frequent flyer this year uh, with all of the different town halls that I've done. Because we ask the employees to tell us, what is your reality? What can we do? And what you said to us was this, and you gave us really an outstanding answer. You said, well, here are the problems. But also you said to us, here's something we can do together. Here, this is the way we can change these things. So you gave us not just problems, you also gave us solutions. And the input that you've given us, that our strategy focuses on five key areas. So as Ian mentioned, um, recruitment, retention, and promotion of people with disabilities. Second, something that we all live with and know we can improve is enhancing the built environment of, of, the, of the world that we work and we live in. Third is making information communications technology accessible to everyone. It sounds easy. Technology can be so enabling, but it can be incredibly disabling if we don't leverage it properly. Fourth is helping public servants to design and deliver accessible programs and services. People want to do the right thing. We need to help equip them so that they can. And finally, what really underpins it is what we call building an accessibility confident public service. And that it gets at exactly what Ian was describing. One in which we create an environment 
where every individual feels that they have the tools and the support that they need to make their very best contribution. That's what we're striving for. Alors, je suis ravi de les... So I'm delighted to see everybody involved here today. I've talked about the involvement of public servants. Not happen only from grassroots up. It's hugely important, and that's why we put so much emphasis on consultations. But it takes leadership. It really takes a commitment and a buy-in from the senior-most levels. Et c'est pour cette raison que j'aimerais vraiment saluer... And that's why I'd like to congratulate my colleagues, the members of my advisory committee... ...group who have spent time and passion and their own commitment in helping us shape this strategy. And I really want to single out my colleagues, Janine Sherman, Patrick Borby, Chantal Mailleux, Taiki Sarantakis, Bill Matthews, Paul Glover, and many others who are in the room today who aren't on the advisory group but have been playing a key role in supporting us. Un gros merci à vous parce que c'est votre engagement personnel. So thanks very much to you, because of your personal contribution, it helped us so much. People, it's just the beginning. I mean, it feels like we've been sprinting to get to uh, the launch of the strategy, but it really starts today now with implementation. How do you actually take something that's on the web, how do you take a document, and how do you make it live? How do you actually give it life in our, all of our respective organizations? Je sais qu'il y a de la passion pour l'accessibilité dans cette salle. I know there's a great deal of passion for accessibility in this room. I hope that each and every one of us, we can convey this passion to each of our departments, each of our agencies. I hope that we can inspire other people, and I hope we can really bring about change, change from within. This strategy is just another document, but I know perhaps because I've been in the public service for a really long time, um, I know that when the federal public service puts its mind to doing something, we accomplish great things together. So thank you for coming today. Thank you for your commitment to this. Thank you for the journey we're about to start together. And before we wrap, I would like to invite us all to watch a little video, it's really short, it's like 90 seconds, that's going to set the stage a little bit for what we're trying to do with this video. And it can also be streamed for those of you uh, joining us electronically through canada.ca forward slash accessible GC. Alors avec ça, let's watch the video. La stratégie d'accessibilité pour la fonction publique a cinq objectifs. The accessibility is five, a strategy has five uh, objectives. They're all important. The fifth objective is to create a public servant which will allow everyone to participate and which will also make the necessary measures to make sure that everyone feels appreciated, everyone feels welcome. And also the one point for which me is particularly important because this is what, in fact, will enable us to change our attitudes in the, long, in the long term. In order to create a culture, the culture that we need in the public service, so that everyone working in the public service, people with disabilities or not, but so that all employees can participate and contribute to their absolute potential. Will it be fun being in the environment in the near future? If we can reach a point, where we can buy different adapted technology without having to go through a very complicated process. And also be able to integrate this technology to the working environment the way there for a number of reasons. Because for the moment, really, the environments are not accessible. So it would be very helpful, therefore, to see in the future, in the near future, we could do this. Because there are barriers, barriers which we can bring down. Well, accessibility is very important for us because this is Canada. Canada is a country which appreciates diversity, which values it. It's our strength. And it's very important, therefore, really, to have a public service where each and every member can continue to contribute to his or her maximum. And so our strategy for accessibility in the public service, this is a strategy, in fact, 
which seeks to include everybody, all our employees with disabilities or not. So if you want more information, please consult canada.ca slash GC Accessible. The Public Service Accessibility Strategy sets out five goals, and they're all important. They're all equally important. But if I had to pick the one that was the most, uh, uh, that can have the most potential to make a difference, I would say it's goal number five, which is to create an accessibility confident public service. A public service where uh, employees with disabilities can fully participate. Uh, can be included, can be valued, where differences are embraced, and that we can, everybody can work to their full potential uh, and contribute to the maximum. It's one of the biggest challenges that people face with the public service or in the workplace in general is always having to like advocate for yourself as a person with a disability and how challenging that could be at times. In my opinion, the most important aspects of the strategy are to be able to give persons with disabilities access to reasonable accommodation within a streamlined and effective format, and ensuring that employees do not have to wait for weeks or months to be able to access the tools that they need to complete their jobs. Accessibility is so important to me because this is Canada. We are a country that values diversity. We believe in its richness. And so we should have a country in which no Canadian feels left behind, in which every Canadian feels that they can make their very best contribution in our country and in our public service. And because of that, we are developing the public service accessibility strategy that's going to focus on five key areas designed to really make our public service the best it can be in terms of accessibility. For more information, you can go to canada.ca slash accessible GC.